hope you're enjoying all the summer sunshine. I'm going this morning to read Psalm 27 and then John will talk to you about it. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I'll be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he'll keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle I'll sacrifice with shouts of joy. I'll sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You've been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, O oh God, my Saviour. Though my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O oh Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not hand me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence. I'm still confident of this. I'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Good morning from me. I've gone back to the Psalms again today and Psalm 27 is one with a range of beautiful descriptions of who God is. Now my first thought after I read it was one that may not sound very helpful, but bear with me. When I was in the sixth form at school, is that year 12 or 13, my English teacher was a lady called Miss Good. In fact, I had two English teachers and the other was Mr. Speak. Not bad, is it that? Good Speak a good description of an English course. Anyway, Miss Good had strong views and one of these was that she didn't like mixed metaphors. I can't remember precise examples she gave but I think to entertain us she would use ridiculous ones like don't burn the midnight oil at both ends, something like that anyway, all the way through to the more serious point that it wasn't right to put too many images in one sentence or one passage because she felt that could be too flowery or confusing. She thought language should be clear and simple. Now all that makes me think that Miss Good would not like Psalm 27. It uses lots of images to describe God. In fact it piles one on top of the other. For the psalmist, God was, and this is the list, light, salvation, stronghold, shelter, beauty, dwelling, face, helper, saviour, goodness. One word wasn't enough. He had to use ten. I can feel Miss Good's red pen poised ready to strike out at least eight of them. But much as I was grateful to her for her brilliant lessons, I can't go along with her at this point. Sorry, Miss Good. Yes, we should aim to be simple and clear when we express what we believe, but there are times when a person of faith has to go over the top. Such is the wonder of the love of God that language has to break the rules. And in this case, the psalmist does go over the top. He breaks the rules of what I suppose is good grammar because he wants to build up a picture of a God who is beyond words one who offers overwhelming love, a love that is available to all who believe. Now, if I had time, I could analyse each of the ten words and try to show how they all give us a different aspect of God's character. I don't have the time, and it's perhaps as well, as it's the total effect that counts. God had all these qualities, 
and the psalmist feels compelled to share this all-embracing experience. And if it means piling words on top of each other, then so be it. Now, if this was true for the psalmist, how much more for those of us who experience the love of God in Jesus, his only son, who gave himself for us. Sometimes we have to use words abundantly to get across the gospel message. And I want to say to the wonderful Miss Good, thank you for encouraging me to speak as simply, as clearly as I can. But please may I, like the psalmist, sometimes use a number of words to get across the message of my faith. I am grateful to poets and hymn writers and preachers who have used words imaginatively, imaginatively, may well have mixed their metaphors and gone a bit far, but have enriched my faith as a result. And now we turn to prayer and I begin with thanksgiving for people such as those. And then I'll continue with a hymn, Use as a Prayer. It's a hymn that has five verses and I've worked out that it has about 18 different images about God's love. Too many? Maybe, but it was the only way that the former slave owner, John Newton, could describe his conversion, and it hasn't stopped it being the best known hymn in the world today. So we pray. We thank God for all who have used words to express their faith, who have been imaginative and bold in what they have written and said, and as a result have strengthened our faith. And we call to mind any who have particularly helped us in what they have written or spoken. And let us pray for all who use words today in writing and speaking and preaching, that whether they are simple and clear, poetic and creative, they may be used to commend the gospel. And now I turn to the hymn, Amazing Grace, full of imagery, maybe full of mixed metaphors, but full of faith, written 240 years ago, but still inspiring Christians and those who seek faith. So I pray, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils and snares, I have already come. God's grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good to me, his word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. And when this heart of flesh shall fall and mortal life shall cease, I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace. When we've been here 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Amen to that.